do you think that you're charging too much? Do you think $600 is too much? In 2016, the price of EpiPen increased by 500%. I just wanted to try to get inside the mind of a uh, large drug, com drug company uh, CEO for a minute. One company has done an incredible job of washing their hands of the entire situation but they're actually the ones responsible for it all. Okay, and when did you decide to use this model of price increase? It was first recognizing the fact that there's um, a severe, shockingly low understanding of anaphylaxis, and there is a shockingly low number of people who were prepared or protected with EpiPen. So you decided you should raise the price? Well, um... The first time they formed their monopoly, they did it covertly by abusing the legal system and government. Generally, when a, a drug goes to generic, doesn't the price go down? There's no generic version because once there was some possibility of a generic version, you have the executives over at Mylan hitting up the executives over at Pfizer and essentially both agreeing that there would be no generic version. Mylan would inflate the price of the EpiPen and then they would share the profits. Somehow the companies responsible for all of this are building a new EpiPen monopoly. But this time, no one seems to notice. Lynn Pharmaceuticals uh, was actually a key player in a plot to monopolize the market for the severe allergy medication known as EpiPen. After the monopoly was broken up, you would expect the prices to fall back down to $100 each. It will be, we will, it will be the same product with epinephrine auto injector on it. It will be the, the same product. But instead they fell to $300. How is it possible they're still $200 more expensive? And the only thing you changed was well, the name. Is it possible the company behind the first EpiPen crisis is still doing it? It's 1987, and the EpiPen is becoming widely available all across America. It looks like this. It has a blue cap and an orange tip. Countless lives are being saved thanks to this new delivery method of an old drug. You use it like this, blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. Simple, right? But they have one problem. The FDA says there's a shortage of devices that inject emergency allergy medication. A shortage of life-saving EpiPens being reported across the country. Due to their inexperience with complex manufacturing processes, Mark Hell, the original owner of the EpiPen, was having difficulties keeping up with the demand of the growing market. In 2003, there was a shortage of EpiPen due to quality control challenges. There were specific components used in the ejectors that were leading to failures. The devices were misfiring or not activating when needed. There's a nationwide EpiPen recall over a potentially defective part that could cause the injector to fail. In 2007, Mylan took over EpiPen and they did have the resources to produce enough of the drug to meet the demand. Over the next 10 years, they would introduce steady 15% price increases, corrupt politicians, and conspire to increase product sales. But they had a little known partner in this scheme, Pfizer. After purchasing EpiPen, Myland was planning to make 3.3 times its revenue, but there was a new threat to the EpiPen. Patients are demanding generic adrenoclick for treatment of life-threatening allergic emergencies type one, including anaphylaxis in people at risk of a competitor would cut into Mylan's plans to make EpiPen even more profitable. For their monopoly strategies to work, they needed no competitors. So what did they do to fix this? They asked Pfizer to stop investing in their new drug and instead share a portion of EpiPen sales with them. And, not surprisingly, since monopolies are always more profitable than competition, Pfizer did it. Now, they just wanted to know how they could make the most amount of money. The answer was by deploying a series of price gouging strategies that gave no regard to human life. Since EpiPens are rarely used products, most customers only buy one and perhaps would never need it. Mylan wanted to turn these customers into repeat customers. They started printing on their packaging and warning consumers that EpiPen only lasted for one year. They cited that this was because ethylene goes bad after one year. But they wouldn't lie about something so important, would they? Well, they did. 
ethylene actually has a shelf life of four years. But this was only the beginning of their scheme. Their next plan would be even more ambitious. In order to raise the price even more, they created an internal operation dubbed Project 2X. What you're seeing now are real emails from members of this team discussing creating fake medical reasons to justify only selling EpiPens in packs of two. They even had their customer team reach out to people buying EpiPens to determine if they would still buy EpiPens if they were forced to get two. This is what they had to say. Of course, I would still buy EpiPens if I had to buy two. I wouldn't be happy about it. But if I needed it to live, I would do it without a second thought. It's no surprise that they went through with the plan and removed the one pack from the market, but this still wouldn't be enough for them. Their next move was political lobbying. They were able to pass many bills, making it harder to enter the market as a competitor. But their biggest success came when Barack Obama signed into law, mandating that every school in America have an EpiPen in them. This created a huge stream of recurring revenue for Mylan, and they were determined to lock it in. For every school that brought their product, they gave them a discount as long as they agreed to repurchase from Mylan the next year. This kept schools locked in because their next year's budget would only equal the amount they spent last year, meaning they had no other choice but to buy EpiPen. But how did they manage to pull this off? Gala Mansion, the head of the National Association of State Boards of Education, was responsible for pushing this through. She worked tirelessly for over a year to get this passed and signed into law. But why was she so passionate about this cause? Well, she was put in her position by her husband, Senator Joe Manchin. And looking at Joe's donor list gives us a clear picture. Joe claims not to know that his top donor was Mylan and claims that his decisions were his and his wife's alone, stating, There are still those of us who are involved in public service for the sake of serving the public. But Joe and his wife have something else in common other than their love for EpiPen. Their daughter is Heather Bresch, the CEO of Mylan. But they couldn't get away with this, right? Well, they did. It all came crashing down in 2016. But no one did any jail time for this, and Pfizer and Mylan were forced to pay fines that wasn't even one-tenth of the profit they made. After the lawsuit, there are now four drugs on the market, AdrenoClick and its generic and EpiPen and its generic. The lowest price for any of these injectors is $300. While that's better than the $600, it is still inflated. Do you remember who owned AdrenoClick from the beginning of the video? That's right, it's Pfizer. In 2020, Mylan merged with Pfizer subsidiary company Upjohn this means Pfizer owns AdrenaClick and EpiPen now. If you trace back the manufacturer of all the major injectors in 2021, they will lead to a manufacturer called Meridian Medical Technologies. Whoever controls the manufacturer of the pen controls the price. But that's not all. Meridian Medical Technology is owned by none other than Pfizer, 